All right. So one of my favorite things in games is just crafting things. I just find it really satisfying to take things that are simple and useless, and then you just like put them together and you make something that is useful. And this tends to chain itself until you're making more and more complex things. And this kind of progression just kind of captivates me. So I wanted to make my own crafting game, but I wanted it to be as simple as possible just to streamline this feeling. So here's one of my old projects. It's basically the game I want to make, but this is one that I made for a game jam, and I kind of just want to change like literally everything about it. I want to change the inventory and everything else, so I'm just going to be starting from scratch. So I got Unity up and running, and I have to change the background color. I don't like the default color. Well, this game's graphics are going to be pretty simple. There's just going to be a lot of squares or like rounded squares. So I just drew up some sprites for those. So I added them into the game and I'm about to change it so that it would look proper and it's just like an empty box right now. So I made that outline part black and made the inside white and now I made it so I could just like change the size and now it looks fine. So now there's just these squares and they could be any size right now. Okay, then I added in like a background grid just so I could like actually see what size they are. And I could just move the square around by changing the location or the size. I also made it so I'm able to spawn many of them and made sure none of them are colliding. So if you look here, here's just like a bunch of them. Next I made it so I could move the camera around. So for now these tiles are called facilities. And you could drag them around. Uh, you cannot have them overlap with anything, so whenever they do, there's just like a giant white X over them to tell you it cannot place it there. And then you could just like let it go and it'll move there. So I'm using scriptable objects to control these tiles. They have a name and a size. So right now I'm changing the size, and when I click play, they change in size. I could change the name, and the text on the tile also changes. Next, I added in an inventory. Right now there's just this like temporary blueberry thing. Next, I made it so that the facilities have their own storage system. When you click on them, you can peek into them and you can see what it has. I changed the storages a little just so they look different from the facilities, and I also added in a new item, just so you could see what it looks like without the same item repeating over and over again. Next, I made it so that the items can move between storages. So like, so right now you can see there's four sticks in this storage slot and there's four sticks in this inventory, and when I click on the sticks, this one increased by four. There's two sticks in the storage now, and when I click, it'll add two to the inventory. Okay, so that clip, it was hard to see what was happening, so I changed it. So now these, there's this, like, animation of this flying item going from one place to another. Next, I added in the ability to zoom in and out. So, yeah, because sometimes this text was a little small and hard to read, so we could zoom in now. I added in the ability to move the inventory around, and sometimes it's just annoying having to go all the way to the bottom left just to move an item in the inventory into the storage. And just for fun, I was also messing around with changing how fast it takes for the items to move to and from the inventory. I changed the way that these flying items look so they like start in a little bit of a random position and they take like a random amount of time to get back, just so it doesn't always look the same. They also made it so that if there's several items that are moving, it creates a level of the sprites that fly across the screen. Next, I added in a couple more items. Here's a worker, here's like energy, and here's like a clock. The workers are different than other items because they do not stack like other items. So for instance, here's like the energy symbol. There's already four in here. When I click this three, it'll add three more to that because that's what like items that stack do. But when I add in these workers, they do not stack and they each go into their own slot. This is because their number is not actually the count of how many there are, it's going to be the amount of energy that the worker has. Next, I made it so that the tiles can actually do something. So if you see here, it needs the worker and it requires negative one energy and it takes five ticks to complete. Uh, so since this energy is negative, it takes negative one energy from the worker, so that should be increasing the energy that the worker has. So you can see, for each worker, the energy is increasing every five ticks. And even when the storage is closed, you could see that this number was like 14. If I wait a second and wait a bit longer, it's now at 18, and like... Now it's 21, and yeah, so they do work when they're closed. 
So here's another action I added. It needs a worker, it takes two energy from the worker, it takes four ticks, and it doesn't require any other items. But whenever it activates, it outputs a stick, and it gives you three of them. So let's see it work. So I add in the worker, and the stick count is increasing by three. I added in more workers, and now it's increasing faster. Then here, I could add in an action that requires the stick and the worker, and when you add in the worker and sticks, it makes the berries. But it's still making the sticks, because that still exists on this tile. Here, the worker's energy has hit two, so it can no longer do either of the actions. So it was a little unclear that the actions were happening, so I added in this bar that shows the progress whenever it's filled an action happens. If I add in more workers, you can see there's more bars, and sometimes they sync up, so you can't really tell the difference, but they're there. This is the one that generates the sticks, and when you add in the sticks, it's doing both, since one is generating sticks and one is generating the berries. If I add in two workers and the sticks, then there's four bars, because two of them are generating sticks and two of them are generating the berries. And it was still a little hard to tell what was happening, so I changed it so that now whenever like the worker gains energy, you can see it says plus one E. The E stands for energy. I considered making it say plus one energy, but then that like got really cluttered. I also added it for regular items with stacks, so you can see there's this plus three every time this gains things, and there's this minus two, but you can't see it because I changed it to energy, so I have to change it back to just to say minus two E there. Okay, so the storage right here is like really long, so I had to change it. So here you can see this is what it looks like when I control the facility. I have the size, the number of inputs, and the number of outputs, and what actions it has. So here, this is what it now looks like when you have a lot of inputs. They're always in rows of five. So if I change them, you can see that it gets longer or whatever, just depending on how many it has. Next, I needed a way to show what the facilities could do. So when you click on like this facility, you could see that a bunch of things show up. Now that I have these actions that show up, I made it so that you could actually use them to put things into the inventory. So whenever you like click, Whenever you left or right click this energy sign, it adds in a worker, because those are the things that have energy. If you left click on one of these inputs, it adds in the whole stack into the storage. If you right click, it only adds in enough to do one of the recipes, so this adds 5, every time you right click it adds in 5. And I also made it so that it works for the output. Every time you right click on the output, it adds in enough for one recipe, so it'll add 5 sticks and 5 berries each time. And you could also click on the clock, which does something similar, except it also adds in a worker. So the intent of the system, if you wanted to do this recipe three times, you would right click here three times, and it'll add in enough of these to do it. And to control how fast you do it, you would click once for one worker, or more for even more workers. Okay, I added in more visuals to tell you what you're doing, so when you mouse over an item, it tells you the item's name. And I also made it so that if you try to do something and it can't happen, it creates this text that tells you why. So here you cannot ha you don't have enough storage space, you don't have the input items. And I also made it so that these progression things will turn when when it's unable to do an action. So here they turn red. Then when you mouse over them, it tells you why. There's not enough storage space to do one of these actions. Next, I made it so that the facilities can generate other facilities. So if you look at this action, it requires 5 energy, and it makes one exclamation mark, and the exclamation mark is just something interesting. So if you do it, it makes this explore tile. Then since there's a tile in the way, it turns red, and then it tells you that. And then right now it's just making a bunch of tiles, because that's what it does. I had to change what the action looks like, and now it has like this list of facilities to generate. Right now it's just generating that one explore facility. You could see I could add, make it generate multiple of them. So let's add in the rest to this one. And now when you add in a worker, it says there's two things that it does that's interesting. Because it makes these two tiles. And you need enough space for both of them to be made. Obviously this is kind of bad, you don't always want to be making facilities, sometimes you want empty space, so I have to add in a way to like disable this. So here's what I did. Whenever you click on one of them, you can turn them red, and when that happens, you're not doing that action anymore. 
So if I turn both of these off and then I add in a worker, nothing will happen. I could turn on the one that just gives energy and it'll happen, and it's like easily toggleable. If I turn off the one on the top, it'll make these two facilities, and any action that makes facilities will automatically turn red after you do it once, since there's like not going to be any situations in which you want to make a lot of them. Next, I added in these pin buttons on this facility. Now you can click it and then it'll always be open now. Whenever you drag it, it drags with it. And now you're able to have these two different storages open at the same time. So some storages are being peeked at and some are being pinned. When you want to pin one of the storages, there cannot be anything underneath it. So you would have to like move it around. Then when you want to move a facility that has a storage pinned, you also cannot overlap them at all. Okay, I changed it now. Now the border changes color depending on whether or not it is pinned. And when one of the facilities is selected, it also changes the border of the facility now. So now you can easily tell which one is selected. And I also made it so that you could select some of the inventory slots, but you can't really do anything with that yet. Next, I added in these biome items. So let me collect a bunch of them really quickly, and now when I select a slot with a biome item, I'm able to place it in the background. Next, I change it so that the facilities will change depending on their location. But right now, I am placing a lot of planes biomes for this rest tile, and it turns green. And I'm also able to do this for this other tile, and you can see that it has to be completely covered in order for it to change. Next, I made it so that some of the actions require a specific biome. So here you can see that the only enabled action is this planes one, and this is currently doing nothing since it's not in the planes. But once you put it into the planes, it will make these sticks. So next that, I changed the visuals when it was generating a facility. So right here I'm adding in four workers. So since each worker is doing these two actions, there used to be eight bars here. Since this action is generating a facility and it automatically turns off, it could only appear once, so now there's only five bars here. So, yeah, you can see five. So for these facilities, I don't want everything they're able to do to be always visible. I want them to have sort of like an upgrade system. So here's what the upgrade system looks like. So if you add in a worker and a stick, there's this plus sign and that means that there's going to be more recipes. So once you complete the action, there's this new action that requires it to be in a planes biome. Now there's also another action that requires a worker in five sticks, and it adds in one more action. So if I add in the five sticks, it adds in the new action. Now there's two different ones in the planes biome. So now you can see it's doing all three of these actions. So here you can see what it looks like for the scriptable object for the facility now still has the name and the size, it has the number of input slots and the output slots for the storage it has, but now the way that it has actions changes. So now these facilities have like an internal level that it is. So if it's level 0, you have these three actions. If it's level 1, you have these three actions and this one, but it also removes the upgrade option. As you upgrade more, it adds in more of the actions. Next, I added in a saving system. So right now, this is like the save file looks like. It's a JSON that has like three main things, the facility, the inventory, and the chunks. This is that chunk 00, zero uh, the rest tile is centered here. So it has a bunch of ones here because that is this line of tiles. And one is the biome ID of planes, and zero is the ID of like this null tile. As you can see I have a bunch of ones, a zero, and then a one. That should match the JSON. A bunch of ones, a zero, and then a one. And then this is what the inventory looks like. It has like a number of slots, and then item ID 3 is the worker. It has one of them, and then the energy it has is 55. And then it has this like, has item ID 8, which I guess is this planes biome, and it has a count of 3. And then the next one is a worker with a count of 1 that has 30 energy. Yep. That matches. Okay, and this is what it looks like for the facility. So, it has a facility ID, what level it currently is, what the location of it is, uh, whether the storage is currently pinned, which of the actions are currently enabled, and then it has to store what like the items are for the input, so it's kind of similar to the inventory. 
Okay, next I added in some more inventory controls. So now when you select a slot, you can right click a different slot and it moves one of those items. And when you left click, it moves a whole stack of items. I added in some manual saving, it's just like, if you press left shift and one it saves, and if you press Q it loads. And then I did the same for like 2 and W, 3 and E, 4 and R. So I could save this to slot 1, save this to slot 2, this to 3, this to 4, and then if I load 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, this just allows me to test easierly. And I guess it's useful for the gamers if you like cheat and like save scum, but I don't really care about that. Next, I need to like actually add things into the game so there's like a playable demo when this video releases. So here are the items I had to make. I have grass, grass, rope, grass, shoes, leaves, trees, and sticks, and rocks. Then I had to add in the biome, so I already have the plains, and then I had to add in the rocky land and the forest. So in the background, there's a time lapse of this. Look at all the pretty items, and I don't, I'm just like filling time to talk here, just so you could like watch this, because I don't like having non-vocal space in my videos. You should probably just skip me drawing, but I like seeing me draw. Okay, so here are all the sprites, and now I have to add them into the game. So, so here's what my list of items look like, and I have to like add more. So I'm just gonna like go through what I do for that. So I need to add in a leaf, a rock, a stick, and the rocky land and the forest. So right here I have like a human readable version of the t actions I have to add. Now I have to like make the game do that. So right now I have to do add in braiding the grass gives grass rope. So in order to do that, I have to go to the braid top or I have to go to the braid folder, I have to create an action. I'm in the braid folder, I have to create an action. I click on the action, I rename it to like braid grass gives rope. I have to set it so uh it could be any biome, uh, a random number of energy, a random amount of ticks. Uh you need grass, you need three of them, and then you have to set the output item. The output item is going to be rope, you're going to get one, and that's it. Then for the facility, I have to add it here, add it to the actions it has, and now if I click click play, I open up this braid tile, and it shows me it. Okay, but this doesn't have any inputs or outputs, so I can't do it, so I have to change the facility to have inputs and outputs, and it doesn't work, because I haven't because it's loading from the save file, and the save file does not match that. So I have to like quickly fix that. Okay, just trust me, I fixed it now. So anyway, so now this rest tile is going to generate the braid tile. Now when I look at the braid tile, it has a recipe, the one that requires three energy and grass and makes rope. So so if I, I, I right click here, it adds in the grass. Then I right click here, it adds in the worker, and I get gra grass rope. What, what am I calling this item? Grass rope, yep. So next on my plan, I need to add in lacing the rope gives grass shoe, but I don't have a lacing tile discovered yet, so uh, where do you make that? I said, I guess I should make the discovery lacing from trying to braid with rope. So let's do that. I'm in the braid tile, in the braid you're discovering how to lace, so you make an action. This is... Braid grass rope discovers lace, yeah. And this is braid rope discovers lace. Uh, you're gonna generate the lace facility. You're gonna need a worker to do this. You're gonna need a random amount of energy and a random amount of ticks. You're gonna need a uh, grass rope. That makes. Yep. Uh, I think this is fine. You don't need any output. So now you should add it to the facility. Now. When I click, click braid, and now there's this one that requires a worker and rope, and it does something interesting, and it makes this lace tile. Whoa, we did it. So I basically implemented these other actions too, and it's kind of repetitive, so I'm not going to put that in the video, but I'll just cut to where I actually did that, and then I did something else. Okay, I changed some things around, so like now... You can see what storage is selected because the background of it turns lighter. Normally it would just have like the outline of the facility, but that was a bit hard to see, so now you could actually see where you're putting them. Then I changed the save controls. So left shift and one, two, three, four saves, and right shift one, two, three, four loads. 
Then I also have left shift plus M starts from the beginning, so if I click left shift and M, it goes to the beginning. So, uh, so then I exported the game, which required some changing because I don't know what I'm doing. And wait, is it playable? I think I played it playable. Yeah, it's, it's playable. Don't go to this link, it's wrong. Okay. Yeah, you could play it in the game. You could see, ooh, that's the selected one. That's what I just mentioned. Yeah, it's on itch. This is ugly right now, because I... This is, like, garbage. Yeah, you could play it right now. I have to, like, change this title and stuff. And that's basically all I have for the game so far. This video was supposed to come out like a month ago, but I kind of got distracted by a different game, but I'm done with that game for now, so, uh... You can play this game, the rest of the world, at the link found in the description below. It's currently like a five minute experience where there's like only three biomes and a few items from those biomes and the later items don't really do anything, but that was mainly because I just wanted to have something playable with like a few biomes just to see how like the controls feel, but more will come to this game later. I will continue making videos on this, and if you want to see those videos and future development videos of mine, uh, you could subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed your time. Uh, you should join me next time. Uh, why did I say time twice? Blech.